Hello, today we will be going over the phospholipid membrane and the fluid mosaic model. The phospholipid membrane is the outside of each of the cells in our body. As you can see, it consists of many different parts. A few of the main ones we will be covering are labeled here. Phospholipids, cholesterol, proteins, and carbohydrates. It's mostly made of phospholipids, but it also contains the other, these other important components. Now, believe it or not, phospholipids are very similar to what olive oil is made out of. I should tell you something about the structure. The widely accepted way of describing the structure of the phospholipid membrane is called the fluid mosaic model. This model proposes that the membrane is like the surface of water. It can easily flow and react to forces around it. The analogy I will be using today is that the phospholipid membrane is like a big crowd. Look at the picture here. All of the people in the crowd are like phospholipids. As you can see, the structure of the phospholipid is seen here and was covered in the lipids video in case you need a refresh. Now back to the picture. All of the buildings are like the vehicles are like all the buildings and vehicles are like the proteins and carbohydrates embedded in the membrane, which are in general bigger than the phospholipids. Now imagine the phospholipids like the people. They're constantly moving and walking around and sliding past one another. This is the same for the proteins and the carbohydrates. Imagine that the tents and buildings are on wheels and that the cars, as seen over here, are moving around. The phospholipids, proteins, carbohydrates, and cholesterol all move relative to one another. Now, each of these main components has a different use. The phospholipids are what the membrane is mostly made out of. It's like the glue or batter that keeps everything together. They orient themselves so that their nonpolar tails are together on the inside because they repel water, while their polar heads, hydrophilic, remain on the outside because they like to interact with water. Now, each of these main components has a specific uh, role. Cholesterol helps to keep the membrane structurally stable with increasing temperature. As you can see, it's also a lipid and contains four rings as seen right here. This is the structure of cholesterol. It's nonpolar and it orients itself inside the membrane. Proteins are used for structure and for getting things across the membrane. To be anchored in the membrane, the protein must have a nonpolar section that will interact with the center of the membrane, as seen here or here. An exception to this would be a peripheral membrane protein, which is attached to another protein. But the other protein must interact with the center of the membrane. Some proteins span from one side all the way to the other. These proteins are called transmembrane proteins. Some of these transmembrane proteins are hollow and allow for certain molecules to be passed across the membrane. Carbohydrates also have a specific purpose. They're used for structure, but also for cell identification. A carbohydrate attached to a lipid is called a glycolipid, seen here, while a carbohydrate attached to a protein is called a glycoprotein. You can think of carbohydrates like the cell's flag. Different types of cells will have a different flag to be identified by signaling molecules. For instance, the cells in your liver will have different flags than the cells in your heart. That concludes our review of the phospholipid membrane.